Good evening, Gracie Pond. Welcome to our online prayer meeting on this Wednesday evening, and uh, thank you for joining with us. Thank you for continuing to pray for our church and for our nation and uh, continuing to pray for one another. Thank you for continuing to uh, be faithful in your giving to the ministries of the church and and in serving one another and staying in contact. And I know the Lord is is blessing us. The Lord is keeping us. The Lord is answering many prayers and and protecting us through this time. And we give him the praise and the glory for that. Just to give you uh, an update, uh, Martin and I are, are working um, working together on a, on a plan. We, we're going to be meeting with the deacon soon, and uh, we're, we're looking to, uh, uh, trying to be wise and cautious um, as, as far as when we can reopen, when we can begin to gather again, and what that will look like, how we will go about that, how we will uh, uh, probably, possibly phase into uh, our ministry here at, at Grassy Pond. So we're working on those things, and trying to keep a look at what's going on around us and uh, you be you be in prayer and hopefully soon we're we're going to have something together and uh, we're going to be moving in that direction I know you've seen the news and you see where the different states are trying to reopen slowly and cautiously and uh, that's basically what churches will be doing uh, as well slowly cautiously uh, wisely uh, trying to reopen so be praying about that and we'll have some information for you hopefully soon and then of course uh, continue to work on those uh, treasure verses this is a great time to be doing that uh, to be hiding God's word in our heart we're working on Psalm 5110 creating me a clean heart O God and renew a right spirit within me Psalm 5110 what a wonderful verse, and it goes right along with uh, the things we're studying in Matthew's gospel as well. There's always great unity in the scripture, in the Old Testament and New Testament, and we're seeing that. Now we're continuing on Wednesday evenings with what we call our favorite verses. These are verses of scripture that uh, you turned in uh, of those when uh, we read through the Bible last year, verses that really stood out that the Lord used to encourage you and to teach you. Uh, tonight we're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. It says, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Wonderful, encouraging, promising words that Paul is sharing with the church there at Corinth. But as with any verses of Scripture, really to understand verses 8 and 9, we really need to see what's going on around. We, we really need to see the context um, so that we, we understand what's the nature of this promise uh, and I say that because we, we need to know what principle is Paul talking about here? What, what's at work in verses 8 and 9? Uh, because it's not really a general rule. So I don't think, for example, I don't think that we would, we would be uh, really biblically correct kind of to just kind of toss out these verses. For example, if, if, if life is, is not really going our way and we just refuse to give up, we refuse to quit, um, and we look at and we say, well, you know, that's what Second Corinthians chapter four verses eight and nine say. Well, you know, having some tenacity about us, that's a good that's a good thing. And and having the fortitude to keep driving forward when everything seems uphill, that's that's commendable. But I don't believe that's what Paul is talking about, and we know that by looking at the context. So Let's look then at verse 7. I think verse 7 really helps us understand verses 8 and 9. Verse 7 says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. So Paul is really speaking specifically when he 
when he talks about verses 8 and 9, he's talking about the Christian life. He's talking about Christian ministry. He's talking about living out the faith in a world and in a context which would be totally opposed to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So verse 7 is kind of stating the nature of who we are as believers. We have this treasure in jars of clay so that the surpassing power to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. That's kind of a statement of the nature of living out the Christian life. And verses 8 and 9 are kind of illustrating that point. So if Paul says, I'm a jar of clay, I, I have this treasure in me, and the purpose the, way, the, the reason why God has designed Christian ministry that way for the gospel, for the ministry to be carried out in weak, fragile, breakable vessels is to show something, to demonstrate something. The surpassing power is God and not us. And now here's what that looks like. And so we could say in verses in verses 8 and 9, if it, were, if it were just us, if it were just left up to us, when we are afflicted, we would, be, we would be done. But to show that the surpassing power in us that keeps us going, that keeps the gospel going, that keeps our Christian life going, that keeps our faith going, to show that that surpassing power beyond our circumstances belongs to God and not to us, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. But not crushed. We are perplexed. We are, we, we are confused. We are, we are agitated. We, we, we face unseen, unpredictable obstacles. We are perplexed. We are, we are, we're constantly facing things that, that we didn't expect in and, and ourselves, in our jars of clay. That, that would have been our undoing. But, but to show the surpassing power belongs to God and, and not to us. To show that the nature of this treasure that we carry, this gospel that we carry, is of God and, and not of us. Even though we are perplexed, that's the nature of living for the Lord, we are not driven to despair. Now, sometimes we might be right on the verge, and sometimes we might be in the, in the pit of despair, but we certainly don't end there. Persecuted, verse 9 says, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. So these are wonderful, powerful, promising verses, but they're pointing to not our strength, but the strength of the Lord. They're pointing to the, the power and the sufficiency of the gospel of the new life that lives within us. Not the strength of our flesh, but the strength of the, the, the recreated life within us by the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when the, the people of God when the, are, are crushed and, and, and persecuted and, and put down and perplexed and afflicted and, and they come across all of this opposition. And yet the gospel continues to advance. They, they continue to hold to the faith. We, we continue to persevere under trial and all of that's pointing to there's something at work here besides us there's something at work here that's greater than us we have this treasure in jars of clay we have this gospel we have this new life we have this grace of God we have this Holy Spirit in these weak fragile 
jars of nothing but clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. Now we can, now we can really see verses 8 and 9 as applying to living out our faith when we're loving God and we're loving others and we're caring about the good news, we're going to endure, we're going to face, we're going to experience all types of issues, all types of hindrances from without, from within, from daily life, from hardships, from those who would oppose and stand against the gospel and against the word of God. We're, we're going to face all kinds of discouragements and hindrances but the thing that's going to keep us going and to keep us shining the gospel is not us but what is in us this treasure the treasure that we hold Christ that we hold the gospel that we hold the new life that we hold. Life is not in ourself, our self-determination, our self-will, our, our, our self-esteem, our self-preservation, our self-improvement. Life is in not in self, but in the Savior. And so now we can look at the rest of that paragraph Thinking in those terms of verses 8 and 9, now listen to verses 10, 11, and 12. Always carrying in the, in the body, that's the jars of clay, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. This is God's arrangement, God's purpose. This is, this is why God brings us in and out of these trials and hardships so that carrying in the body the death of Jesus the life of Jesus may also be manifested verse 11 for we for we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus's sake so if you're living out the gospel if you are living out the faith there's going to be at some point Somehow, tribulation, right? Through tribulation, we all enter the kingdom of God through tribulation. So that, so Paul is saying basically the same thing that he said in verse 7. He's saying it in different ways now. Verse 11, for we who are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Verse 12, so death is at work in us, but life in you. So he's saying what God is doing in us, how God is keeping us, sustaining us, using us, in, even in the middle of great hardship and persecution, the result of that is that he's encouraging you, building you up in the faith, strengthening you in the faith, for when the day when you will in turn face these obstacles and hindrances and oppositions. So the point of then of verses 8 and 9 is that we can trust and we can rely on the Lord Jesus Christ who lives within us. To keep our faith. To keep our feet steady. To keep us moving forward. No matter what we might encounter or face in this life and we face many things don't we we we're facing something now and the Lord is bringing us through it the Lord is sustaining the Lord is providing and the Lord is watching over us so let's go to the Lord let's go to the Lord in prayer father we do thank you for the the wonderful provision of the Word of God. Thank you that we have books like 2 Corinthians that we can look at and, and we can see 
eternal truth. So encouraging, Father. These words are, are truly treasures. We can think about, Father, the, the great treasure of the gospel. And how the gospel, Lord, within us makes us a brand new creation and gives us new life, a new heart, a new life, a new home. Wakes us up spiritually, makes us complete, makes us whole. So that whatever we face in this life, as, as we continue to believe, as we continue to live, your power is demonstrated in our weakness, just as you told Paul in, a, in another place in the New Testament. Your grace is sufficient in our weakness your strength is sufficient. So, Father, we, we love you and we thank you that we can depend upon you. We can rely on you. We can trust in you. And, and you're, you're teaching all those things to us again, even during this time of going through this pandemic and trying to make decisions each and every day. And, Lord, trying to understand what to do and what not to do and looking to you for our provision, Lord, both spiritually and physically. So, God, we ask you to continue to do a good work. We ask you to deliver us from this time. And, God, we ask that on the, the other side of it that we may be looking to you. Lord, I, I pray that we don't go back to business as usual, Lord, after having, having seen that that just in, in, in a matter of days, everything that we know can be reversed, can be turned upside down. Just, just, just understanding that, that, that everything is so temporary and so fragile. Lord, those things, help us not to, to, to lose that insight too quickly when... when Businesses begin to open up and we begin to travel again and go again and there's a little more money in our pockets and, and things are looking normal again. Lord, help us not to, to lose that sense of how, how things can so quickly disappear and so quickly change that we might not put our confidence, Lord, and our trust and our joy and our life in the in the things around us but as this passage reminds us that the treasure that we hold within us lord we do ask for you to revive us and to revive your church and to send revival throughout our land we so desperately need it we so desperately need you god keep us as a church and help us as we do look forward and and try to map out a way to carefully, cautiously be able to once again come back together. We, we're so eager, Father, to worship together as you call us to do. So give us wisdom and keep us safe. And we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.